Lastly, I know that the, the bench is opposite will uh, probably roll their eyes at this and, and probably stop listening when I say this, but the biggest problem that I have with issues like this is that this government seems to be perpetuating this overarching culture of blaming the poor. We always treat people with suspicion Absolutely. before anything. Yeah. The onus is always on the individual to prove that they're not a thief, that they're not a fraud. Absolutely. They, the pressure is put on them, on people who are, quite frankly, have enough to deal with mm -hmm. already. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I've stood in many of these debates and I've heard that all these different groups, whether it be disabled people, pensioners, whether it be uh, the low, those in low wages, we target them all the time mm -hmm. and we end up that we pit these people against each other. We try and tell young people, oh, you can't get a job because pensioners are living too long. Mm -hmm. we, tell, uh, we tell the disabled that, sorry, but we can't afford uh, your benefits anymore. We have to cut £30 mm -hmm. off uh, your benefits. And all the while, in the heart of all this, there is a small group of people who are wealthier than ever before. And I have to say, I include every elected member in this chamber in that category. We all got an 11% pay rise. Who else did? Yeah. Who else has seen that kind of rise in the outside world? I mean, one of the other, I'm just going to, I'm going to finish soon, but one of the other, uh, a couple of weeks ago, in front of the Working Pensions Committee, we had Philip Green, who uh, was giving evidence. Now, this is a guy who has lost £570 million pounds worth of pensions, 22,000 pensioners affected, 11,000 jobs gone, and yet he's still able to go away on his £100 million pound yacht to the Greek islands. This isn't the kind of society that I think many of us want to be seeing. Yeah. And let's not forget that despite this whole saga and despite all the horrendous things that we're hearing and all the stories, concentrics are still going to walk away with millions of pounds from the work that they've already done. I believe the last figure uh, was £27 million, I think. Now, this is a culture that the government has to be responsible for. 0.8% of benefits are fraudulently claimed. And yet the general public seems to think that a third of all benefits are fraudulently claimed. The government has a responsibility, not just to look after people, but it has a responsibility for the language it uses, for the rhetoric, and for the culture that it sets. Now I know that me standing here probably won't convince the opposition benches of this, and this may uh, be a little bit unconventional, Madam Deputy Speaker, but I want to urge them to go and see a film. It's called I, Daniel Blake, and it will give you a cold and sobering view of the reality that so many people are living. Because that film actually quite rightly points out that when we have debates like this, we're not talking about service users, we're not talking about claimants, we're not talking about numbers or, or national insurance numbers on a concentric computer screen. We're talking about citizens, yeah. your citizens, we're talking about people here and they deserve to be treated with a lot more dignity and respect than they are. Yeah, yeah. And our first statement as Prime Minister in um, Downing Street, Theresa May promised, if you're from an ordinary working class family, life is much harder than many people in Westminster realise. When we take the big calls, we'll think not of the powerful, but of you. When we pass new laws, we'll listen not to the mighty, but to you. When it comes to taxes, we'll prioritise not the wealthy, but you. So my last question to the government is when? There are people with absolutely nothing. When are you going to prioritise the people that need you more, most? Because Lord knows they are losing both patience and hope. Yeah.